Every time I get visitors in here, I always tell them that I'm quite pleased to have a machine in my office that runs at 19 bar that doesn't require a safety document. Everything else that we do in the whole of the university has to have everything uh, properly checked and safety assessed and uh, all the forms in the right place. But this, you can buy it in uh, any good shop and uh, make coffee instantly and it's running at uh, pressures five times higher than your uh, water system at home. This is one of the best coffee machines in the world. It makes the most delicious coffee and uh, most of my uh, visitors will come back again, because not for the uh, good chat, but literally for the coffee, I think. Because it's working at high pressures, um, we think that it's got the potential to then run at higher than boiling temperatures as well. And that's what you need to make these nanoparticle systems. Right at the back here, we've just got a pot of water, and what it will do is it will take water through a high pressure pump, and it will then heat it up, push it through these coffee pods here, like that, so it's got a little coffee inside. It punches a hole in there and it pushes the water through and it comes out the most delicious coffee you've ever had. What we're going to do, we're going to take it to bits and inside we think there are enough components to actually get a, a small nanoparticle machine together. And uh, we're going to have a go at making probably iron oxide, which is um, a, a relatively straightforward nanomaterial. And so we'll take the components in here and make a few modifications, just a little bit like the A-Team. Uh, we'll take the covers off and uh, uh, look at the uh, various uh, bits inside. Uh, put on together our special reactor that we designed here at Nottingham. And we think by the time we finish, we'll have nanoparticles flowing out the front, possibly into the same cup. And we'll analyse it just to make sure that the particles are there using a very high-powered microscope. Mm. Fantastic. Nothing like it. So, basic components, um, don't need that anymore, that's the container where all the spent coffee pods go. Take this out, that's the water container. So all the water goes straight through that filter there. And courtesy of Mick, who's very camera shy, we can probably have a fiddle with it. Academics talk about stuff, but it's uh, real people that do real stuff. So that's our power, the uh, water's being fed through that pipe there. I've just had a quick peek at this and I think the pump is there and the heater is actually right underneath there where the cup sits because that actually feels quite warm. In fact, it feels very warm, so that must be the heater because we've just made a coffee and I've just burnt my fingers, so that's good. I have a suspicion that the manufacturers of this device didn't want us to turn it into a nanoparticle machine. Aha! All right, brilliant. And effectively, that's our pump mechanism. So you can see the water's coming down through the top from there, through into there, and then it's taking it straight into our heater system, which is there, and then it's pumping it up through the coffee system. So once we've taken that housing off, we'll work out how to uh, adapt it. So if our connections there and there can take that pressure and we can get the hot water under pressure out, then we can adapt and put our reactor system on the front and make a very, very cheap nanoparticle system. To recap, what have you made here out of what? Um, we've made a rig that can make uh, nanoparticles. In the back, we've got the usual water holder and that's got our metal precursor. That's going to pass through the high pressure pump and the heater inside the coffee machine. It then passes through this reactor area here and then we've got a cooler on top. So all this gubbins here is all to uh, cool it down so that we can collect it without it coming out of steam. And in order to get cooling system we've used SpongeBob SquarePants as a cooling system there you can see. We've we used the high pressure pump, we've used the heater system and so on. It just needed a little bit extra. We thought we could do it all in one go, but it needed a little extra. So uh, that's why we've got the cooler and we've got an extra heater on the back. That water's just flowing around, gets hot in the middle, comes out cold, and then you collect it uh, for a nice little espresso. Not that you drink it. Effectively, it's taking water that's got metal ions dissolved in it. And if they go through sufficient pressure and temperature, those metal ions combine to form a particle, and those particles are on nanoscale. So they may only have 100 or 1,000 atoms in them, so they're really, really small, very high surface area. That's the precursor that goes in. So that's the metal ions dissolved in water, 
when that passes through this reactor, it'll pass out and it'll come out the other end with a different colour because we've got particles inside. There we go. So, in there, a slightly darker colour, so if I can, if I transfer it now, bit of a leak at the bottom, that's always good. You should have a darker colour. So, that's our precursor and this is our particle solution. So we haven't made a lot of particles, but we've made some because the colours changed effectively. In this solution, you have ions that are still dissolved, but you also have nanoparticles that are uh, present in that and they're so small, they don't drop out, so they'll just stay in suspension for years and years and years, and they won't drop out. So that's uh, iron oxide, nano rust. What do you think the people that make the coffee machine will think about this? I have no idea. I don't think they're going to be massively impressed. I don't think I'm going to be making any more coffee with that one, although I have bought another Nespresso with the latest one, which is one of the reasons why I did it, actually. I fancied having a new coffee machine.